it is a rainy day and I find nothing better than watching certain movies on a nice rainy day. Now, some of these movies that I have in this pile, I have 10 movies that I think are perfect for a cold, rainy day, a day that you're gonna kind of stay in and you're really not gonna do much. I think these are perfect. Not all of them have heavy rain scenes, but I think they all have that vibe. Before we dive in, we did get the shirts in. Everything's available in the store now. Links down below. But the very first movie here is something that I absolutely love. It came out in the 90s and it was actually, it came out in 1993 and it stars Mike Myers, Nancy Travis, and we're talking about So I Married an Axe Murderer. Now this one here, it really doesn't have like those heavy rain scenes, but it just kind of has that vibe. And I don't know, it's just a really good comedy for me, something that I enjoy on those kind of days. It's a little bit better than a Saturday afternoon film, but then... The times that I always revisit this are on those days where it's just a throw caution to the wind. We're not doing anything today, and I'm just going to pop this one in. And it always gives me that kind of warm, fuzzy feeling. And picking this up on the 4K, I thought was totally worth it. Excellent picture. But if you've never seen this movie, Charlie, played by Mike Myers, is a quirky beat poet. This poem sucks. Kind of has a fear of commitment until he falls in love with Harriet, who's a butcher. Throughout coincidences through this entire movie, he starts to kind of piece it together and feel that she is this killer that's on the loose that people keep talking about. It's in the newspaper. It just kind of keeps getting referenced. And so he starts to feel that he's the next victim. The movie just kind of keeps escalating from there and really enjoyable. Something that I like to revisit all the time. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it was just a really fun movie. And I highly recommend it. Number two on the list is Sleepy Hollow. Now, this is one that came out in 1999. And it has that whole dark and gloomy and fog. And everything about this is just perfect atmosphere for that rainy day feel. And it stars some of my favorite actors. You have Christopher Lee, Christina Ricci, Johnny Depp. You know, so many great other people are in this film. And it's something that from the very first time that I saw this, it was everything that I love. I love the supernatural. I love the macabre, the fantasy. Like everything about this was just for me perfect. Revisiting it often. For the longest time, I only owned this on VHS. And so when I upgraded to the 4K, I thought it was perfect. And so every single time that it rains now, this is one that I go to all the time. This is just a dark reimagining of the Washington Irving's classic tale. And you have the skeptical New York City detective played by Johnny Depp. And he is Ichabod Crane. He's sent to Sleepy Hollow, the small town, to investigate all of these grisly murders. And he has this mindset where he doesn't believe in any of the possible supernatural he thinks there's a rational reason for everything. And as he starts to investigate this stuff, he's starting to kind of lose his mind a little bit. And I really just absolutely love this film. And to revisit this all the time, you have the gothic look, the eerie creepiness, the fog, the setting. Everything about this movie just screams rainy day for me. Number three is a fantasy adventure film from 1988, and it's Willow. This is something that I absolutely love. It comes from the mind of George Lucas. And from my understanding of it is he was trying to secure the rights to make Lord of the Rings. They wouldn't let him do it. So then he created the story. And if that's true, I'm glad it happened that way because this is something that I've been watching as a little boy and regularly pretty much ever since. It's something that I highly recommend. You have sword and sorcery, high fantasy. But if you've never seen this movie, Willow Offgood is a kind-hearted farmer that finds a normal-sized baby. And to keep his village safe, him and a few of the other villagers take it upon themselves to bring the baby back to where it belongs to protect his village. Along the way, it's Val Kilmer's character, who's this rogue swordsman who's definitely not on the up and up. He's lying at every turn. He's doing the wrong thing. But he pales up and becomes friends with Warwick Davis's character. And oh, it's such a fun film. And like I said, it has that kind of vibe where I'm going to watch this anytime it rains. But I love sword and sorcery. If you're into that type of stuff, this is one I highly recommend. Now, not everything on this list is fantasy or adventure, but it seems like a, there's a lot of them that are. And this one here, number four, is Stardust. It came out in 2007. It stars Michelle Pfeiffer, Robert De Niro, 
Claire Danes. When I first saw it, it just kind of reminded me of a lot of those adventure fantasy films that I watched when I was a boy. It kind of surprised me, and I do nothing about it. I ended up finding this. This was on like some kind of free streaming service at some point. And then I ran out and found the Blu-ray right away. If you've never seen this one, I think it's just top-notch. But Tristan goes on this adventure into this magical kingdom. He crosses the border, something he wasn't supposed to do, because he wants to get this falling star. And he finds out that the falling star is actually Claire Danes. He falls in love with her. Michelle Pfeiffer, who is a witch, and her sisters are witches. They're really old. They need to get the star to become young again. But then you, you know, as you're going along that adventure, it kind of twists a little bit more. And then you have air pirates. And so you have this like pirate ship with it's floating in the air. And Robert De Niro is the captain of the ship. And this is just a fun fantasy adventure for the whole family. There's a little bit of humor in there. But it's something that I absolutely love. And I love to revisit this on a rainy day, even though the movie itself isn't filled with rain scenes. And it just has that fun, whimsical feel that works on a nice rainy day. Number five is Breakfast at Tiffany's. This movie came out in 1961. It's a romance comedy. And if you've never seen this one, this is an iconic film. It's been talked about to death. So there's really nothing I can probably add to this other than the fact that I love it. You have Audrey Hepburn's character, she plays Holly Golightly, free-spirited New York socialite, dreams of marrying somebody rich, and then her life changes when she befriends George Papard's character, who's a little bit more uptight, and he's a struggling writer. And as they grow close, it's just kind of a fun, romantic comedy, but it's not like a romantic comedy that you would have today. This is something from the 60s. <laughs> Everything about this just works for me. And then you have the iconic rain scene at the end. And so this one, I would say it's probably a guilty pleasure, but I'm not ashamed of it. Number six is something I've been watching since I was a little boy, and it's a fantasy film 100%. So there's a lot of them on here that just kind of work for me for that rainy day vibe something that i love but this one here can kind of fall in that romance kind of narrative a little bit and enough so much that they kind of made a point to talk about that in the beginning of the film is this a kissing book so you have fred savage's character talking to peter falk's character asking if it's going to be a kissing scene and the romance and the yuck of it it was sold to him as a swashbuckling fun adventure story so it has that romance vibe but maybe because of the way it was presented i never noticed it as a kid we're talking about the 1987 film the princess bride this is just an iconic movie from the 80s. Lots of people love this movie. It comes up on tons of lists. But if you've never seen this by any chance, you have a young farmhand named Wesley. He must rescue his true love. And you have this fantasy. And it's not quite sword and sorcery, but it is in that little bit. So there's, there's, there's a little bit of magic. There's a little bit of sword play but all adventure. Along the way, they encounter all of these other characters. You have the Spaniard, the Sicilian, the giant, and all of those people were very famous at the time when this movie came out. So even as a boy, I might not have known who Carrie Elvis was, but I recognized him. Obviously, I knew who Andre the Giant was. And so like, it was just a really enjoyable movie. And it's something you could easily get lost in, especially on a nice rainy day. Number seven on our list is not a fantasy or an adventure film. This is actually a slasher slash horror movie that came out of the 90s. And we're talking about, I still know what you did last summer. This is something that it came out in 1998. It's a follow up to the first one. I know what you did last summer. And I understand there's like a plot hole just in the title there, but it's something I really enjoy. I always think about this when it rains because in the movie, there's a lot of rain, a lot of heavy, you know, thunder, and it's just a fun movie. But the entire thing is during like monsoon season on an island. And if you've never seen this one, I don't want to spoil it for you, but you have Jennifer Love Hewitt, a few people from the first one, and I'm not going to list them all off because maybe you want to watch the first one first. If you've never seen this film, it just takes a page out of the slasher story playbook. 
it's a sequel. Things are changed. A little bit of the rules are different, but you have some of the similarities. And so one year after the brutal attacks where the first one took place, there's a mysterious figure attacking Julie and her friends again. You have this murderous figure who's hiding in the shadows and coming out and there's, there's jump scares and all that stuff. Everything about this movie just works for me. And it's just, can't really talk about it much more without kind of spoiling it, but it is what it is. It's just a fun slasher film. Number eight is Clue. This one came out in 1985, and it's something that I've been watching since I was a kid. And now I was definitely like only a few years old when this movie came out. So when this was put out on home video and I finally got to watch it in the late 80s, early 90s, Nobody had told me anything about it, and it's something I just kind of accepted about the film, but it plays, the end of the movie has three endings. And on a VHS tape, and the original way that this played on home video was you watch the movie, and then all three endings just kind of play back to back. And I just thought it was kind of the charm of this kind of goofy vaudeville style movie, but it's not. It actually was recorded with three separate endings and those movies played in different theaters in the areas. And the idea was that you would go see the movie multiple times and it kind of failed. It didn't really work out well, but I didn't find that information out until the internet age. And it's something that was very interesting. And then the Blu-ray came out and when the Blu-ray came out, it has the option to watch them with a random ending. So that would be like when you went to go see them in the theater back in the 80s or watch it how it was put on home video where all three play back to back. And it was just something that, one, I always choose to do the random endings now because I feel that just adds to it and that's how it was meant to be seen. But growing up, I only was able to watch it the one way. So I'm glad both versions are on here. But it's something I highly recommend if you've never seen it. I had already mentioned that it's pretty much a vaudeville type movie where there's humor and it's it's over exaggerated and just really enjoyable. It's based on the popular board game Clue, follows six guests who are invited to a mysterious mansion only to find that they're all suspect and murder and then one by one the guests start dropping and so they're kind of always pointing the finger at each other and trying to figure out who did it. It's full of laughs, great cast. You have Christopher Lloyd, Tim Curry, Michael McKean, Leslie Ann Warren, so many great people and just a fun movie for a rainy day. Number nine is an adventure family movie that came out in 1985. It's The Goonies. Now, there's been a long time rumor that the sequel has been in the works for many years. And I don't know how I feel about those 30 year later sequels, because the rumor now is that it's greenlit and it is happening. So I don't know about that. But if you want to watch this movie before you watch the second one, I highly recommend it. If you've never seen this movie, for me, it's a perfect rainy day movie. It doesn't have a ton of rain scenes, but it has that like overcast clouds. It was filmed in Oregon. It's got the whole rainy day vibe. You have this whole group of kids. They call themselves the Goonies and they find a treasure map and they use that map to go on an adventure. The goal is to find the treasure to save their homes from foreclosure along the way. They meet up with the Fratellis, who are a group of counterfeiters, and they are murderers. This whole opening scene, there's a jailbreak and fire and a car chase. From the first time I ever saw this, I just was kind of hooked. I've been watching it ever since. And it's something I think everybody should watch. One of my all-time favorites. Number 10 is something that, when it came out, I saw the trailer. I would not stop talking about it so much that this movie was given to me for Christmas. and. At that time in my life, we didn't have movies. Like It wasn't the family's philosophy. Owning a movie was a pointless, silly waste of money. So the fact that I even had this movie on VHS tape, I would watch it over and over and over again to the point where sometimes I would even rewind it and watch it in the same day. And I watched it every Saturday for many years. And we're talking about 1991's Robin Hood starring Kevin Costner. You have so many other great people in this film. I think the year that this movie came out, I think that soundtrack played on like every radio station. And I just remember hearing it all the time. And I remember hearing it so much that I heard it before I even saw the movie. And so something that, I don't know, it was just kind of like a the whole season this movie came out. That's pretty much all I could think about. And so I absolutely love this one. But if you, you never saw this one, it's 
just great, full of like that swashbuckling adventure. You know, Robin of Loxley returns home from the Crusades to find his father slain and all of his people oppressed by the sheriff. And he takes upon himself to help the poor people take back what's rightfully theirs from the evil sheriff. And oh, it's just something that kind of have always stuck with me. You have high adventure, sword fighting, you know, damsel in distress. Everything about this film is something that I think is perfect for a nice rainy day anytime you're stuck inside. That was my list of 10 perfect films for any rainy day. Let me know in the comments down below if your list matches mine or if there was anything that you would add to the list. Rolling into the spooky season, we do have limited edition spooky season shirts. I'd show off mine, but it's still in shipment. It's still on the way here, but those are live today. They're on the website. You can check them out. The link is down below. And those spooky season shirts are gonna be limited for the season. They're gonna be going from now until Black Friday. Black Friday, we're gonna roll into the Christmas season and we have a lot of Christmas stuff designed. And we're looking forward to that. Like I said earlier, the store is live. And I wanted to thank you all the channel members. And as a thank you to the channel members, we're going to be giving away a mug every month to the lower tier members. And we're going to be giving away a shirt every month to the higher tier members. It's something we're going to offer every single time. And you never have to become a member, but it is an incentive on top of the other stuff, the background scenes, the members only videos, that type of stuff that we're offering. But with that, Watch a movie today, and I'll catch you guys next time.